So now what you have done is we have made uh, a backdrop and we have made two buttons here. Both these buttons, what they do is they uh, are basically here so that you can enter a certain game mode if you want. Okay. So let's say how do you enter that game mode? So generally we are going to make the things same for both the games, but what we are going to do right now is that simply uh, first code that how do we start this game? Okay. So these buttons are going to be programmed in a way so that whenever we click these buttons, they would basically uh, take your game to a certain screen, let's say. So what do you do with them is that first you make them show on screen whenever the flag is pressed and when they are clicked, okay, when they are clicked. So you're going to put, put, put up an event here, which says when this sprite clicked. So whenever you click this sprite, so as this is a space mode sprite, as the space uh, mode sprite, so you are going to say that when this sprite clicked, so first thing that this needs to do is hide, but before hiding, it needs to switch your backdrop to space mode. So this is what is going to happen if you would click on play space mode. See, it disappears and it comes back when you press the flat button. Also, if you want to make this object look clickable so that you think so you, you feel that you have clicked this button. So how can you make it clickable? So making it clickable is very easy. All you need to do is increase its size and decrease its size. So I would go to looks. I would say change size by 10 and then wait for 0 0.1 0 .1 seconds. And after that, change size by minus 10 once again. Minus 10 once again, and that's going to happen. So when you would click this button, so this would happen, see? Also, uh, I think that I have not shared my sounds with you. Also, you can add some sound effects here so that you can make your object clickable and it feels that your object is being clicked. For sound, you have this sound bar over here. So you would say, play sound, pop until done. So now you add it here and see what happens. So if you would click this like that, this sound would appear. This sound would be presented to you. Make sure that hide is at the bottom. So everything has happened before the button hides. Okay. Like that. Okay. So this was an easy, easy way for us to do that. And remember that whenever you press the flag button, it also starts there. Okay. So now let's check it again. So this is kind of working. Uh, perfectly fine. Now let's uh, change the other one also. Let's add a behavior to the other one also. So adding a behavior to the other one, this one, we are going to copy this same code and add it to add it to this block. Actually what you need to do is just click this one, drag it and put it at this and this would appear here. Now let's just show that yes probably. So now you have both of these events having the same function. So let's say that they do not change the backdrop. First uh, so I'm just putting this change the backdrop switch backdrop to outside. <clears throat> So now let's see that if they are clickable, it hides perfectly fine. Now it is not coming back. So that's the problem here. 
Similarly, if I click this one, this also hides and this does not, this actually comes back. So that is actually coming back because I have used show button here, which I have not used here. So if I ask this character to also show when flag is clicked, so this would also appear on your screen whenever you click flag. So remove this hide also just to check it. Let's just uh, remove it for some time just to check it. So clicking, so your objects have become clickable now. This code helps your objects to become clickable and this makes them disappear when they are not needed. So that's what happens. But you can see that the other one is not removing. The other one is still there. Similarly, if I click on this one, it's still there. The only thing that this code is doing wrong, what can you tell me that what is the wrong that this kid does this code is doing? Can you guys tell me something that there is something wrong happening due to this code? Because there is something that is wrong. Can you guys see what is wrong that's happening with this code? Something that is wrong with this code is that this code does not allow you to go to the tunnel mode. See, when I click on the play tunnel mode also, it takes me to the space mode. And when I click on play space mode also, it takes me to the space mode. So that problem is there because we duplicated this code and we did not change this from space mode to tunnel mode. So if this happens, so now you would say that we go to tunnel mode. And if I click on play space mode, we go to space mode. Perfectly fine. But what should happen is that are these objects should change. These objects should hide. So in order to make them hide in case you go to any other tunnel is that we are going to use an event here which says when backdrop switches to space mode, we would say that our object hides and similarly when our backdrop switches to tunnel mode, it again hides. So we are just going to copy this code, drag it here and put it to this block. Fine. And again, the other one also. So now if you click on any one of those, the other one is also going to disappear. And if you click on the second one, you can see the both of them will disappear. So this is like our clickable screens have been made for the game. Now what we are going to do next is that we are going to start creating our game. And in order to start creating our game, we are going to have our game. Give, we are going to give our game some characters. Okay. So the first character that I want to give my game is uh, that I want to make a, let's say, shooting game in which I'm going to shoot things that are coming. So let's say that how do we make this shooting game? Okay. So we are going to actually make a shooting game and for shooting game, what we are going to do is make a character that can shoot bullets. So first thing that we would do is create a character and the name of that character would be a shooter. So we actually have to create a character. So I will go to paint and draw a shooting character. So my shooting character is just a straight circle. I will give it some outline. Dark color and try to make it thicker. And I'll give it some inside color, which is lighter or something like that. So this is my shooting character. It's basically a shooting character's head. You are watching them from top, let's say. So what you need to do next is just give them arms and give them a gun to hold. So in order to draw its arms, I am going to use this line tool and I'm just going to draw two lines like that. So this is now my shooting character.
this character is now a shooting character so this shooting character uh, is fine all it needs is a gun in its hand so let's give this character a gun also a gun is going to be uh, this i am just going to draw a rectangle which would look like a gun okay remember that your gun should have some metallic color so i'm just going to give it some metallic color using this one make it dark gray on top and light gray on bottom and let it look like that. okay so this is my gun character so in order to adjust it you can select the selection tool and just drag it something like that so that it looks better okay and also it's up to you that if you would want to add some more depth onto your gun so for that i would let's say draw another rectangle a square sort of a rectangle this is and i'm just going to turn it somewhere like that put it here make it a little smaller and just put it on the bottom just send it backwards okay so now this is what your character looks like also you can just copy this one paste it get it to the back also and make it even smaller something like that. so now you have this gun okay so this gun can now shoot your enemies so this character has been made so now let's see that when does this character need to come on screen and when does this character need to hide so what happens is when you press this flag event so you would want that your character does not show on screen so you are going to say hide my character when i press the flag event. so if i press flag this character is going to go hidden this character should come back but when this character should come back in this event when backdrop switches to space mode so let's say that if backdrop switches to space mode this character would simply show up and would go to somewhere here and that somewhere here is minus 168 and 10 so just put it minus 170 and 0 so that is where this character needs to be so that is what happens when you press space it comes in when you press flag it goes back when you press tunnel mode it is not still there we would have it in the tunnel mode as well in some time no issues in that the next thing that we do is we define how our sprite can move so in order to make it move i would first want my sprite to show up and now I can decide how this character will move. But first, let's make it a little smaller so that it looks more interesting. Uh, yeah, seven was fine, I guess. So let's say this uh, is the character. So when flag is clicked or when, when backdrop switches to this backdrop, you are going to set size to 70 for your character. So when this happens your character comes here at this point in this phase and in this shape okay the next thing is that how do you move it so in order to move this character you are going to use two types of movement moving forward and moving backward and then you are going to use two types of turning turning left and turning right turning clockwise and turning anti-clockwise so first is moving forward and moving backwards. So you would say that if, if you, if your character senses there is a key pressed and that key pressed is up arrow, your character should move 10 steps. And if your key your character senses that there is a down arrow key pressed, your character should move minus 10 steps. Moving 10 steps means moving forward 
and moving minus 10 steps means moving backwards. So now your character can move forwards and it can move backward. The next thing that it needs to do is just start turning into one direction. So in order to make it turn in any of your directions that you want, what you need to do is define how it would turn. So there are two types of turn. This one, which is clockwise, and this one, which is anti-clockwise. So we are going to say our character that again, do some sensing and now since if left arrow is pressed, then do not move, but turn leftwards and turn at least five degrees. And similarly, if right arrow key is pressed, then turn clockwise or turn rightwards and turn five degrees. Now, if I add it here, you would be able to see that my character can move forward, it can come backwards, it can turn left and it can turn right. And I can make my character just move in any direction that I want. It's a little difficult, but it's effective. At least it can move in any direction. Okay, so that is how your character is going to move on the screen. Now, let's see what happens. Let's see. We start with the flag key. Click. Now, this is the code that you have written for your backdrop when it switches to space mode. So if I click on the tunnel mode right now, nothing is going to happen. So I'm going to test it on play space mode. So if I click on space mode, you can see that I can have the character and it can move anywhere on the screen. I can just make it shoot other characters, but I have not programmed my character to shoot right now. Okay, so that is why this is going to be a, a very interesting game that we are going to complete yesterday. And also yesterday might be our last class. So we have to complete this game by yesterday or maybe I might take another extra class next week. So thank you so much for joining in today. Take care. Allah Hafiz. I'll share this code. With, I'll share with, I'll share these coding details with you guys so that you can practice that on me. Okay. Okay, everyone. Allah Hafiz.